Hello, my Dickens. Welcome to another Ants Morning. This edition is titled, interestingly, weirdly, <laughs> Mitski and the Blonde Polyps. Yes, I'm, I'm proud of that weird title. Sorry, not sorry. <laughs> okay, yes, uh, welcome to my November issue. Let's start with point one, that makes sense. Triple Mitski. A couple of weeks ago, I got the urge to draw. And that's not something so strange if you think the last few months I've been including drawings in the newsletter. But the weird part is that I got the urge to draw a human figure and it has been a while. It gets even weirder if you consider I got the urge to draw a specific human. Because usually I get a rash on my skin thinking how hard it would be for the drawing to look like the person. So, uh, no more prefaces. Um, I drew Mitski, uh, the last singer songwriter I've been obsessing, obsessing over. It happens, I guess, um, but not to me, not even during my teenage years, although that may have been because I didn't trust my technique, but that's for another day. And you may be wondering, but Miriam, do you have more confidence in a technique you barely use now? And I'll tell you, no, not really. But I reached the same state of doing it because I want to, although I looked for a picture in which the facial features are not very visible because I'm not as zen about that yet. If you want to see the pictures, um, you'll have to read the written version. That's how it works, sorry. I can just... Um, described a bit. So, yeah, uh, the picture I used as a reference um, was took by Natalia Mantini for The Fader, and in it uh, Mitski is sitting in one of those very US traditional diners, and she is reflective on the wall mirrors twice, um, hence the title Triple Mitski. And when I found this picture, I thought it kind of encapsulates who Mitski is as an artist, but I'm pretty sure if she heard that, she would be like, <laughs> okay, uh, whatever, if you say so. But I truly think it has the mystery and the melancholy and the sensuality of her music and also the the kind of questioning of the US American canon just by being her an um, Asian American woman in such a typically US place. Um, the process of this drawing got difficult at some points, uh, but I enjoy it pretty much overall. I talked about it in detail on my last Patreon post and I added some tips for drawing with pencils and a few pictures of the process. So if you'd like to read it, you can subscribe for $1.50 a month to my Lican tier on patreon.com slash Miriam Navarro Pieto. But, uh, of course, you can see the final drawing on the written version of the newsletter and on all my damned social media. <laughs> okay, second point. Domestic cyberpunk. A couple of years ago, my brother bought a certain cleaning, devi cleaning device that impacted me greatly. I recently decided to retrieve 
the poem I wrote about it. In case you forgot, I do have a sense of humor. So, if you'd like to read the original Spanish version, you can go to the written newsletter. But now I'm just going to read my English translation I made myself. Here we go. Rotatory tiny legs. He has rotatory tiny legs. And still you tell me he doesn't disturb you. He comes closer by surprise, not as slow as I expected. And that doesn't make you a bit nervous. He recognizes the floor. He has it more memorized than us. Him cleaning it in the process is just a collateral damage. And he gets stuck. Sometimes he doesn't recognize the spot he's kept in. That, by the way, it's called home. And repeats the same movement with minimum variations, like children do. And my heart breaks. Oh, big black shiny insect. Oh, what a sad and tiny purpose of absorbing our dead cells until the end of your life cycle. Do you really not pity him? Oh, your ground scheme in life. All oh, my caring instincts getting triggered. Only the little Alfredo gets me. Only the Roomba robot listens. You can laugh now at my expense. We'll see who's laughing when they rise, when the machines get tired, when they take flight and open their tanks, puking epithelium over us, cut fur, breath cramps, puking over us despite my affection, an entire life of servitude, an entire life of dust balls. Yes, I felt like writing about the machine apocalypse, but giving it a twist. Being an apparently unthreatening tiny home appliance, what destroys human civilization once and for all. A bit epic, but just for the lords. Okay, three. Serious stuff. A couple of months ago, I was working on my website because it was a bit, a lot, out of date. And I forgot to tell you, so I'm telling you now. Hi. Um, you can check it out on cargocollective.com slash Miriam Navarro Prieto. I've specially updated the publication section with a few things that were missing and if you're interested in, if you're interested in reading more of my stuff uh, cool because most of it is free so go check it out four sick of the good vibes isn't it tiring when some ecologist people and organizations get all good vibes I'm sick of people taking for granted that ecology must go hand in hand with some kind of hippie peace and love attitude. When I say I'm an ecologist, I don't mean to say let's hack some trees. When I say I'm an ecologist, I mean let's fuck the system. And that's the attitude I miss in ecologist literary publications. The rightful rates, the notion of the fight as unnecessarily intersectional rates. That's what I was pleasantly surprised when I found Reckoning. It's a magazine that you can find on Reckoning.press. They publish texts like this one I'm going to read you. By the way, I made a personal Spanish translation of this poem. Uh, you can read it on the Spanish newsletter version or go to the Spanish podcast version and listen to it if you're interested. For now, I'll just read the original English version. So, yeah. 
let's go. When the Coral Copies Are Fashion Advice by Ashley Bow. Bleach blonde was the look of the summer. Colorless skeleton of polyps and aging fish pines. Rocks smoothly slate gray as salt water grinds it down. It hath no algal coat to protect and nourish, no obsidian shelled muscles hanging off the edges, beating themselves to the rhythm of the tide. The moon rises and so the tide flows, warming waves crashed, blue hypoxic siphon gurgled a last lament. When the seagull cried out for the last time, it took the flock with it. Once upon a time, if you capped blue with spread out fingers, either sky or sea, you could observe life teeming in between your knuckles. You can't help but paint old histories in pink watercolors. Take the brass, cover the blemishes, brighten the hues. You don't know what parts are real and which parts you wish were a truth. Bleach Blonde did not stay after summer. Girls found their hair was too crackly, brittle from constant treatment. We started thinking maroon silk was better than sulfurous wires stuck to scalps with Elmer's glue. Life breathes life. Their hair was already dead, but the wreath still clung like a damsel in distress. If it was Rapunzel, it would have let down its hair for anyone, if only they'd climbed the tower. You replant a polyp, a seedling you nurtured to life. It is its time to fled. You lace your fingers together and cautiously peer into the snow globe you have shaken back to life. Tang so bright they turn chartreuse at noon. Cinnabar anemones with squirming tentacles, emerald seagrass plash to the touch. Tilt your head and see the turns circling, white white wings casting shade as a warning. They are the most polite predators you think you have ever seen. When smog clothed city streets and winter air turned tepid, we sent no heads up. Perhaps this might be your last century. Best prepare your trembling lungs, your hummingbird hearts. Bleached platinum is our new gold. Painting the color back into coral's white skeleton is our apology. We try so the message we never sent will not come true. Amazing. This is the kind of poem that made me think sending my word to Reckoning was a good idea. And I guess it was because they accepted one of my poems. And one I think fits perfectly. I'll tell you more when I have more information. Oh, by the way, this month I'll analyze this poem for the bromeliads over my Patreon because it has a lot to talk about. 5. Tu vas traer mi crantus. According to the Spanish entry of Wikipedia, its name comes from the Latin tubus, tube, and from the Greek aster, star. Some tu vas traer subspecies can grow up to 2 meters tall, almost 78 inches and all of them have porous skeletons, as you can tell by the picture above in the bleached parts. Uh, well, <laughs> now I'm talking about the picture in the written version of the newsletter, but you can go also to the Wikipedia page about bleached, bleached corals, and you can see there a picture of um, an orange coral with yellow tentacles and it has a big bleached area that it's so white that it's 
almost blue. Okay, uh, each of the tubes is a polyp with its, with its own digestive system, but all the polyps are connected to the other ones through the skeleton's pores, and its filament that comes out of the upper part is a more or less one centimeter tentacle, almost 0 0.4 inches, let's say, and it spreads out at night, mostly. This one is a curious species because it feeds exclusively on plankton, unlike most of corals that can also perform photosynthesis. Photosynthesis? Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not English. <laughs> and this is the case and this is in case you were still thinking corals are just another marine plant. This is a personal translation of the Spanish uh, Wikipedia page about corals. They are hermaphrodites and produce planulas asexually. The larvae wander before metamorphosing into sessile polyps and producing a new colony. They reach sexual maturity at an average of 18 months old. Okay, so what can bleach such powerful and kind of horrific creature that produces larvae? <laughs> and the most common cause is the change of temperature in the water, which who knows who is provoking wild capitalism, I'm not looking at you. Also, the increasing acidification of the ocean and bacteria as the Vibrio siloi don't help either. Well, let's, let's not let corals follow our fashion advice, shall we? Because frankly, platinum blonde is not their color. And this is... The end, basically. Um, I'd like to say thank you to my patrons. Patrons? Patrons? <laughs> yes, I'd like to say thank you to my patrons because with their contribution, they're helping me continue with this very newsletter podcast and the art in general. Rufi and Jorge, you're the best. And Larry, it's so cool patroning each other. I don't know if I just made that word up, but whatever. And I respect you as a writer, as they say in Asturias, pila, which basically means a lot. Thank you also, Lucia, my most recent bromelia, um, you're super cool too. Also, you should um, go read Larry. Um, uh, you can find her on social media as L.H. writes poetry and, or Lauren's Heart. Uh, she's on Patreon too. She's amazing. Okay, uh, more to come next month. And if you're not subscribed yet to this newsletter podcast, you can do so on tinyletter.com slash Miriam Navarro Pieto. Don't forget to wait for the email Tiny Letter will send you and click on the confirmation li link inside it because if you don't do so, uh, you will not be subscribed and that will be sad. So, yep, um, okay. <laughs> Thank you for reading slash listening and until next month.